Hi, my name is Steve and this is the Triangle 5-1 Ranch. In this video series, we've been talking about the five basic gates of the common stock horse. In part one, we touched on the walk and trot. In this video, part two, we'll describe the backup, lope, and gallop. With the gallop, I'll only give a verbal description because I don't have any video clips of this gate. The reason I feel this is important is because if the rider doesn't know what is happening underneath them, then they'll never develop the field timing and balance that they need to truly control the horse in a manner that demonstrates good horsemanship. I talked about the importance of field timing and balance in my series, Elements of Horsemanship. Let's review some of the stuff we talked about in part one. The terms I use in discussing the movement of the horse are balance, stability, and propulsion. When I say balance, I am mostly talking about axial, front-to-back balance. When I say stability, I'm talking about lateral or side-to-side -side balance. When I say propulsion, I'm talking about the driving legs. Quoting from part one, when a horse is standing and is in a balanced and stable position, with about 60% of its weight on its front legs and about 40% of its weight on its back or hind legs and there is no propulsion. When propulsion is introduced by movement of one or more limbs, the horse will move the limbs not propelling it to regain balance and stabilize its weight. The clips I have of the backup and the lope will be repeated several times during the discussions. This is with the thought that with each repetition, I'll be bringing out a better understanding of the movement and the feel of the movement. The reason I placed the backup between the trot and lope is because the backup can be looked at like it was a backwards trot. That is because the horse backs up using diagonals. If you're unsure what a diagonal is when speaking of the gates of a horse, go back and watch part one. First it moves backwards with one diagonal, then the other, so it is a two-beat gait. If we start with the back right leg moving backwards, we see that the front left moves backwards in unity, while the back left and the front right provide balance and stability. When the back right strikes the ground, the back left and the front right are now in their furthermost forward position. The back right then drives the weight of the horse backwards. The front left is providing balance and stability until the weight has passed over it. At the same time, the back left and the front right are moving backwards to repeat the cycle on this diagonal. Here is the animation of the foot movements. Right diagonal, left diagonal, right diagonal. Let's look at it in slow motion, focusing on the back end and hip. As the back leg drives the horse backwards and the weight is directly over the back leg, the hip is at its peak. When it is in its furthest most forward position, the hip is at its lowest. Let's look again in slow motion, focusing on the front end and shoulders. As the horse's weight comes up over the leg touching the ground, the shoulder reaches a peak. When it is in its most forward position, striking the ground, the shoulder is at its lowest. Now let's look at the lope. First, I need to clarify my terminology. I think of the lope and the canter as the same gait. Technically, there are two different gaits. The sequence of the legs is the same. But in the lope, the rhythm is slower and the forward motion of the legs is shortened for a much slower speed than that of the canter. So in my clips, Daisy is actually cantering, not loping. Sorry if this is confusing. With the lope slash canter, we are introducing a new concept. That concept is called a lead. As we dissect this gait, we'll talk about this more. The lope is a three-beat gait. We'll start with the horse moving to the left because that is the direction Daisy is moving in my clip. In other words, her left side is the inside of the movement. During the lope, the weight is shifted completely to the front left leg. The other three legs are off the ground. She brings her right back leg forward and drives forward with this leg. She then uses her right diagonal to further balance, stabilize, and drive forward. So the sequence is front left, back right, 
right diagonal for three beats. This is commonly referred to as the left lead. The right lead is when the sequence is the right front foot, back left, then the left diagonal. Here is an animation of the left lead starting with the back right. Back right, left diagonal, front left. Here is an animation of the right lead starting with the back left. Back left, right diagonal, front right. Now let's look at the left lead in slow motion. Let's try and see what we could be feeling for as the horse progresses through this gait. Focusing on the back end, we should feel the right hip reach a peak as the right leg drives the horse forward. Again in slow motion, now focusing on the front end, we should feel the front left shoulder as the front left leg reaches out and strikes the ground. Combining the feel of the front and back end, we should be able to know what lead we're on. The viewer should be able to extrapolate what the right lead would feel like. I don't have any clips or animations of the gallop, so I'll only give a short description with a simple illustration. The gallop is a four-beat gait that is similar to the canter. The only difference is that the diagonal is broken from one beat to two beats. In the diagram of the gallop, on the left lead, we start with the front left. The second beat is the back right, followed by the back left, then the front right for four beats. In the diagram of the gallop on the right lead, we start on the front right. The second beat is the back left, followed by the back right, and then the front left for four beats. When the horse is on the left lead, there's a period of time when all the weight is on the left front leg. A sharp turn to the right when the horse is stabilizing itself on the left could easily cause loss of stability. This would make it more difficult for her. There is a chance that she could actually fall down, endangering her and the rider. This is true of both leads. This is also the reason that when posting the trot into a turn, the rider should be at the peak or most forward position when the inside front leg is holding the weight. It is easier for the horse to stabilize the weight. Remember, make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. That concludes this series on the gates of the stock horse. I hope you've learned from it, enjoyed viewing and reviewing it. If you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Leave a comment if you want to add something or have a question or correction. If you know someone who you think would find this video interesting, please share it with them. Thank you for watching.